In Jet Set, I wanna see my scene with lighting and with detail, and I can't do that with USD files. I used a Gaussian splat for the locations. How can this workflow using free software take Jet Set to the next level? And where are the limitations? It's a way to have a photo real 3D scene in real time using a volume of sprites that blend together. So there isn't a mesh or polygon count. So how do we get this into Jet Set? Typically I'm exporting USD files for the scene, which have decimated geometry and a low res version of the materials. To me, these decimated USDs are incredibly helpful to see on set. They make framing these VFX shots so much better and more specific. It's really exciting for me to see, but then I'll throw it up on screen and your average person or your cast and most of your crew who aren't as familiar with the VFX process look at it and think, that doesn't look very good. With a Gaussian splat, you can see the entire scene with lighting and all the full res detail. I made my first Gaussian splat testing this out. I animated a camera circling the room and rendered that out in Eevee. I used both polycam and post shot to make splats. Both ended up with splats of the scene that looked great to view, but both had issues with the scale and origin point not being accurate to the actual scene from Blender. Then Elliot from Lightcraft came to the rescue. He used a Blender add-on and a script that he wrote to basically automate the process from Blender scene to Gaussian splat ready for Jet Set with only a few clicks. It uses free software, which are Blender, Reality Capture, which is part of the Epic Games Unreal Engine, and PostShot. In Blender in the AutoShot add-on, under the splat training, choose Icosphere Pattern Mesh. This creates an Icosphere that you scale into your scene. Choose Camera Track Facing Normals, and a camera will animate pointing around your scene based on the normals of the Icosphere sides. This will generate images of your entire scene. Export Reality Capture XMP creates metadata files for those images. Running another script puts these images and metadata through Reality Capture and packages it all in a way so that you can drag and drop right into PostShot to create your Gaussian splat. Then you just watch it populate. Similar to USD files, the splats also need to be small enough to not crash the Jet Set app. I made three versions of the Gaussian splat to test on this shoot by pausing post shot, saving a splat, then continuing the process. The more detailed splats did cause some Jet Set crashing, but the lower resolution ones didn't, and that's why these backgrounds have a more painterly feel. There's actually a Gaussian splat setting within Jet Set that'll decimate your Gaussian splat for you. When I was first running all these tests, I didn't realize that was there in the menu. It's in settings and then settings. Even at a lower resolution, I thought using this Gaussian splat was light years ahead of using a USD file with a material texture. Before this, we would have to take a portion of a take and run it through AutoShot so that we can generate a Blender project with our footage to see what the shot looks like in the context of the scene. We don't really need to do that step throughout when we can just see what the lighting is gonna be right there in Jet Set. Jet Set can show both a Gaussian splat and a USD file in real time. So in our case, I imported the Gaussian splat and also a USD file with just the bytes animation and audio. Jet Set will occlude your actor if there's something in your 3D scene closer to the camera than they are. And that's one of the really cool features of Jet Set. Because a Gaussian splat is a volume of sprites, however, sometimes those sprites would also occlude either bytes or the actor in Jet Set in real time. It personally didn't bother me just because it would happen here and there, but something to note when using a Gaussian splat versus using a USD file with mesh geometry.